Good morning, everyone. A very warm welcome to a very, very special function. In particular, I'd like to acknowledge some uh, of our special guests today. With us is the Honourable Rob Norris, Minister for Advanced Education. Rob, it's always a pleasure to have you at the U of S. Also with us this morning, President Peter McKinnon. Welcome, Peter. And in addition from our uh, University of Saskatchewan Board of Governors, Linda Ferguson. Welcome, Linda. Also among the audience, I'm delighted to see a, a rather large contingent from the University Library uh, led by Associate Dean Ken Ladd. It's good to have my colleagues along with me this morning. My name is Vicki Williamson. I'm the Dean of the University Library. And it is my great pleasure to be your MC this morning. A few weeks ago, we were together at another important function, a function where we celebrated the partnership of the Government of Saskatchewan in the Health Sciences Project, as we met to mark the entrance to the D-Wing of that project. I think we've all become quite attached to the, to the notion of the porch, that particular special section of that building. That wing will house primarily the laboratories and research space as part of the Health Sciences Building as it nears its completion. We are moving at the University of Saskatchewan ever closer to the life and world-changing interdisciplinary teaching and research environment that we have been working so hard to build. But today we turn our attention to the other end of that building, to the E-Wing, which is situated on the corner of College Avenue, College Drive and Wiggins Road, and what we hope will be a great area for student experience, and we'll finish off the uh, Health Sciences Project. I live very close to that corner. Like the President, I walk past it frequently, and this morning I stood to special attention, realising that today would mark a special milestone in the development of that facility. My colleagues from the Council of Health Sciences Deans are working together with many partners to move the vision of the Health Sciences Project forward. That vision is to ensure that the health sciences professionals across disciplines learn using team-centred approaches that will carry through into the workplace so that patients receive the best possible care from all angles. Since my arrival at the university in 2006, the university library has been very focused on the transformation of library collections, facilities, services, and our organisational culture. And I'm very proud of the significant progress that we have achieved to date with library transformation. But today marks another instalment with the realisation of transformed spaces within the Health Sciences Library and that will mark a very, very major milestone in our journey of library transformation. Let me tell you a little about the current uh, Health Sciences Library, which is located in the B-Wing. It's a source of information for university faculty, staff, and students. Whether it's on campus or elsewhere in the province, the Health Sciences Library is a valuable resource for students, faculty and health healthcare professionals across the entire province. We boast the largest collection of health sciences materials in the province. We have a print collection of over 41,000 books, more than 250 print journals, and we are the home for two important special collections. When we move to the new accommodation, we will be unveiling a third recently acquired major special collection. But news of that will follow on another occasion. But as you know, the world of technology is with us. Our electronic resources exceed over 5,000 electronic journal titles, some 25 key health sciences online databases. We also carry an extensive array of full text electronic books from the health sciences including all of the disciplines across the span of the health sciences. 
In the last uh, two years, close to 120,000 people have uh, visited in person the Health Sciences Library. But in addition, we have many, many virtual visits through our website. In the same time period, our 13 Health Sciences Library faculty and library employees have provided expert guidance and advice, delivered information literacy, and addressed over 6,000 reference questions. As many of you know, the staffing, resourcing, and the size of a Health Sciences Library are key factors in the accreditation of medical doctoral programs. While we have made many significant improvements in a number of areas, the footprint for the Health Sciences Library has not grown until now. Since its inception, one of the priority outcomes of the Health Sciences Project has been to revision and expand learning spaces and enhance the use of information technology to secure and ensure that university resources are available to all healthcare instructors, clinical supervisors, and practitioners across the province. No person can visit our campus or drive down College Avenue today uh, without denying the progress on this priority, as we see the new home of the Health Sciences Library take shape. Yes, it's that beautiful round glass space that you can't help but notice as you pass by. Glass, a welcoming portal to the university and a window on our community. Rounded, just as our students will be well rounded with the integration of the health sciences disciplines. Interestingly, the curved facade on the library is no accident. It creates an inviting form at the corner of College Drive and Wiggins Avenue. Balancing the curvature of the University Observatory, which is just across the street, and creating a courtyard at its entrance to the university. As first the steel, and then the glass, and now the sturdy greystone are put into place, we watch this breathtaking facility two floors devoted to integrated health sciences learning and collaboration come to life. So you can see the outside of the building, but let me tell you what you will find inside. A state-of-the-art library and learning spaces. There will be private study spaces for users with the most up-to-date technology, including a wireless capacity throughout the entire building. Open spaces for interaction and collaboration that will allow for flexible use over time. New era compact storage system for books and periodicals to hold more books in less space. A large number of bookable group rooms with flat panel monitors for visual learning. And an electronic classroom with all the whistles and bells that technology can bring us. But more than just a library reference room or a general purpose computer laboratory, the Health Sciences Library will also contain an expanded learning commons with advanced technology suites where users can access a work environment with a variety of information resources, but importantly, with information specialists and students on hand to support their learning. And of course, we will continue to support our growing wealth of online resources available to practitioners around the province, including public access to the resources for Saskatchewan health professionals. We will almost double the, the physical space of the current library, from 1,470 gross square metres to over 3,050, allowing us to bring all of our collections under one roof, creating a destination library for all people involved in the study of health. Libraries have always been a place where students and faculty can access books and periodicals, do research, study and write. The new Health Sciences Library will be no exception 
And at the University Library, we are thrilled to be moving to a place that is very much in pace with the needs of the health sciences professionals today and into the future. We are indeed rounding the corner on the construction with an anticipated move in date of mid 2013. It is with pleasure that I pass now to Vice President for University Advancement, Heather Magatu. And Heather, I invite you to share with us a little bit more about the facilities and in particular, the people that will use eWing. Thank you, Heather. <clears throat> Thank you, Dean Williamson. While the Health Sciences Library is perhaps the most prominent feature in the new facility, let me tell you a little bit about what lies further within this impressive building. In E-Wing, students from all of our health science colleges will commingle each day as they participate in a new cross-disciplinary way of learning. Students will take classes in E-Wing, they will study there and will work, will work together there, not only through the library, but also in places like the Clinical Learning Resources Centre, which is a simulated clinic that provides students from all health disciplines with the opportunity to learn together in an interprofessional environment. This innovative center will find its permanent home in E-Wing. The Pharmacy Skills Practice Lab, which simulates a real-life pharmacy for our students, will relocate to the E-Wing, as well as the Canadian Center for Health and Safety in Agriculture, a center that for more than 20 years has been dedicated to enhancing the health and well-being of agricultural, rural, and remote populations. And finally, there are two new state-of-the-art lecture theaters one that seats 500 students, and one that seats 125 students. When U of S faculty, staff, and students begin using this facility each day starting in 2013, these individuals will be pioneers in a new era of health education, research, and practice through a greater appreciation and understanding of how all healthcare practitioners contribute to the whole health of the person. Collaboration is at the very heart of our approach to health sciences at the University of Saskatchewan. And thanks to an exciting new partnership, we are moving ever closer to making this a reality. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my very great pleasure to introduce to you today our honored guests, Drs. Leslie and Irene Dubay. Both Les and Irene were born and raised in Wynyard, Saskatchewan, and they were married in 1954. Only six years later, they made their first private sector investment by purchasing land on 8th Street East in Saskatoon, now known as Greystone Area. By 1969, they opened a small business office to manage their growing company. Starting with only three employees, the Concord Group of Companies has grown into a diverse company with business ventures in Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Alberta, and British Columbia. They attribute their success to hard work, sound business practices, and a social consciousness. Through their entrepreneurial spirit, community service, and philanthropy, Drs. Leslie and Irene Dubay have set an inspiring example for business and charitable leadership in Saskatchewan. In 1993, Les and Irene began to donate money accumulated from their business interests to charities. Since then, their philanthropic efforts have been focused on health, education, religion, and poverty at home and internationally. They have donated close to $20 million to a number of important initiatives in the past decade. In 2006, Les and Irene Dubay were inducted to the Sabex Hall of Fame and were recognized during the City of Saskatoon Centennial as part of the 100 who made a difference. In 2007, we were proud to honor both Les and Irene with honorary Doctors of Laws degrees, and in 2008, they received the Saskatchewan Order of Merit, Saskatchewan's highest honor. Leading by example through their strength of character and generous spirits, Les and Irene Dubay are community role models whose philanthropy, community service, and social investment have enriched the lives of many. Today, I'm pleased to announce that Drs. Leslie and Irene Dubay have committed $10 million to the Health Sciences Project at the University of Saskatchewan. This gift will affect many, many people through their partnership with the University of Saskatchewan and our province. Their support will affect not only our faculty, staff, and students, 
but also the millions of patients who will benefit from future healthcare practitioners who have studied and learned together as a team. We're so pleased to finally be able to publicly acknowledge and recognize Les and Irene for their donation to the health sciences, and we will continue to recognize their lead partnership for many years to come. We can think of no greater inspiration for our future health professionals than these two individuals, who from modest beginnings have dedicated themselves to hard work and service to others. Les and Irene have accomplished great things in their lives, and they're excited about what our students will be able to accomplish with their U of S degrees, studying in a building that is designed to provide the best learning experience to all who study health sciences at the U of S. In recognition of their tremendous support of the Health Sciences Project, I'm pleased to share with you today that when the Health Sciences Library opens in the fall of 2013, it will be called the Leslie and Irene Dubé Health Sciences Library. I would also like to announce that the 500-seat lecture theatre in the E-Wing will be called the Leslie and Irene Dubé Theatre. This will ensure that our students will have a daily reminder, first, of all that can be accomplished with hard work, perseverance, and passion, and secondly, that there is no greater privilege than to share the fruits of our efforts with others. I'd now like to invite Les and Irene to please come forward and unveil the renderings of both the library entrance and the lecture theatre, and to say a few words. A special good morning to all friends and supporters of this magnificent university. Thank you for coming. We will have much less to say than you've already heard that you've heard about the facility. All we are going to just spend a few moments in telling you just how we feel about what we do. Irene and I are grateful for the opportunity that we have given, been given to partner with the University of Saskatchewan on this beautiful health science center or this project. Having spent most of our lives in Saskatchewan, <coughs> it's most fitting that our contribution go to this university. It's being recognized as part of our longtime desire to share our wealth in the areas of education and health services. You've heard various speakers how the whole health sector, including delivery of services and research, will enhance generations of healthcare professionals in the years to come. Yes, lives will be changed with this facility, not only for Saskatchewan people, but for the future health of an untold number of others. It is ensuring we enjoy the peace that can only be understood by taking part in providing funding for necessities that families cannot afford. We can help develop facilities such as this health science center, scholarships, bursaries, specialized state-of-the-art hospital equipment and endowments to attract the finest scientists and educators to our university. We are proud to have the, had the opportunity to work with uh, President Peter McKinnon, Vice President Heather Magato, and her staff at the University Advancement. Special thanks to Christy Miller for her valuable support. Irene and I have a great appreciation for the foresight and the dedication of all the contributors or collaborators who spent weeks, months, and years in establishing the future need of this complex facility that will set the University of Saskatchewan at a standard of excellence which is equal to or better than most other larger populated centers. 
As we have said before, God has been very generous to us. The wealth we have been entrusted with carries a serious duty, a duty to share it with those who, for whatever reason, have heavy burdens and many unmet needs. God put each of us on this earth for a reason. Leslie and I believe we have found ours. Our faith has made us the people we are. It has been a driving force behind what we do. We are the stewards who are here to do what we believe is God's will. God bless all of you and this wonderful jewel, the University of Saskatchewan. And thank you very much. Les and Irene, may I be the first, but certainly not the last, to say thank you for such a tremendous gift that you have given to us. My colleagues and I at the University Library are very proud to be stewards of the library that bears your name. Thank you. It is always a great pleasure to introduce our president, Peter McKinnon, and I ask Peter to come forward and express thanks on behalf of our community. I'm almost speechless. I said almost. <laughs> Minister, delighted that you're with us. You have worked through the Academic Health Sciences Project with us. So with such determination and commitment, we're very, very grateful for that. To all of you here this morning, welcome to our campus on this spectacular fall day. One of the great joys of being at the University of Saskatchewan has been uh, the opportunity to welcome our students back every fall. The place is always so much more fun when the students are here in their many thousands and the beautiful autumn has assisted us in welcoming them back in this fall of 2011. This, I believe, is a time of historic opportunity at the University of Saskatchewan on account of the confluence of facilities and people. Reflect all of you, if you will, for a moment on this extraordinary two-building largest capital project in the history of the university academic health and science academic health sciences project reflect if you will upon the fact that only two weeks ago the prime minister joined us to open the international vaccine center a magnificent laboratory that will address the issues of infectious diseases here in saskatoon ones that involve not only human life but animal life a fundamentally important part of our national and international protection against infectious diseases. Reflect upon the fact that the only medical imaging beam line on a university campus in the world is at the Canadian Light Source Synchrotron. Reflect upon the Western College of Veterinary Medicine and its magnificent development over the past few years, and in particular the state-of-the-art facilities that we have there through its $74 million expansion. Reflect on the fact that we have the world's leading hydrologist developing a global institute for water quality and water security on our campus. And reflect upon the dream that we see just around the corner, the new Matt Child Hospital that will be here as well. These are extraordinary facilities. These are state-of-the-art facilities that demand much of us. There are spiritual judgment days and there are temporal judgment days. And I believe that 25 and 50 and 100 years from now, we will be judged by whether or not we have lived up 
to the magnificent opportunities that we have here, opportunities that are on par with those that are available anywhere in the world. And I can say to you, we should all together pledge that we shall live up to the opportunities presented by them to build this community into one of the world's foremost centers in the academic health sciences, in the instruction and preparation of the next generations of caregivers, and in advancing the frontiers of knowledge. It takes vision, it takes sharing, it takes commitment. It takes people like Les and Irene Dubay. And I want to, from the bottom of my heart, words are inadequate, but they are what we have. Thank Les and Irene Dubay from the bottom of my heart for this extraordinary sharing and commitment, really, to the future and to humanity. Thank you so very much. And it takes more people like Les and Irene Dubay. As a gesture of our appreciation, it can only be a symbol. It can only be a gesture. But I would like now to invite two of our fourth year music education students to perform a Johann Sebastian Bach piece from the Oratorio St. John Passion. Please welcome Hadia Cooper and Kathleen Lorenz Gable.
Thank you both for a beautiful performance. Thank you also, Peter, for your remarks on behalf of the community today. Leslie and Irene, your sharing of your gift with our community is inspirational. As we celebrate uh, this key milestone in the transformation of learning and research spaces at the Leslie and Irene Dubay Health Sciences Library, it seems fitting to close our public celebration today with a public recommitment to the vision for transforming our university library. And our vision is, as leaders and innovators in a dynamic information environment, we collaborate with our community to create a positive experience that leads to success in learning, scholarship and practice. A donation like this is certainly cause for celebration, so I welcome you to join with us at refreshments as we draw this morning's formal part of the proceedings to a close. Thank you very much for your attendance today. <laughs>